By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we bring you the finals from the Often Troll Cup. So we have reached the finals and it's going to be a battle between Robert from Belgium and Ron from the Netherlands. Now Robert is playing with his Atok Brew that we also saw in the semi-finals. Now if you've missed that match, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now. You can also check the comments below and there you will find a link to the playlist with all all the games from the Often Troll Cup. So if you missed any of the games, you can find them back over there. Now his opponent is Ron, and Ron is also the organizer of the Often Troll Cup. And he's playing, of course, with Often Trolls in his deck. I've called his uh, deck Troll Tricks. Now before we go to the actual deck tech of this part of the video, I would like to point out that you can check the description below and there you will find a timestamp uh, named MTG Games. And if you click on there, that will take you straight to the action to the game so you can then skip the deck tech section now if you're interested in what kind of decks these players are playing before you're going to watch the finals then i suggest you to stick around because i'm going to discuss them right now and i'm going to start with the deck of robert the atop brew and here we see the deck of robert and uh, as mentioned in the semi-finals as well this is an underpowered list but by no means a weak deck this is a very strong deck not surprised that it reached the finals and there's just so much direct damage in this brew. And of course the Atox making it really difficult. So the idea of this deck is quite simple. Just, just hurt your opponent as much as you can, as quickly as you can. So first off, we've got four lightning bolts, four chain lightnings. So that alone is good for 24 points of damage. So then your opponent is already dead. On top of that, we've got, um, I believe three black vices. So not four, so that's quite interesting. Three black vices, we've got Ankh of Mishra, Black Vice, Ankh of Mishra, this traditional combo that can work out really, really well. We also see four Atox in this brew, so quite heavy on that on that Atox. And we see um, three Mana Volts, so the Mana Volts are quite important to get, for example, those Triskelions out early, because also a Trike is basically um, a Lightning Bolt. Okay, it's six, but if you can get it out early with Mishra's Workshop, you know, Soul Ring, Mana Volt, you just dump it down there on the board you've got your atop to feed the mana volts too it's all good you know actually this deck doesn't have to do any combat damage if it does hey man that's great if it doesn't no worries you've got so much direct damage in here so this is going to be really tough for whoever is going to play against this to kind of withstand all this damage that is just coming and coming and coming i think a risk with these type of decks, and I'm, I'm sure Robert uh, knows that, is that you're running out of gas at a certain point. So especially at the start of the game, you'll be able to just inflict a lot of damage really quickly, but then all of a sudden you're running out of cards and then you're hoping to top deck uh, a Wheel of Fortune. And I think that's why in the powered Atok brews, we always see a Time Twister and an Ancestral Recall, because those two cards are just massive in a deck like this. And that's um, what, what makes it even more special that without those two absolute power cards, uh, Robert has still managed to reach the finals. So um, yeah, curious to see how this will hold up against Ron's deck. Let's take a look at his brew. And this is the deck of Ron Troll Tricks. And as you can see, um, I believe there's also has also been a match of this uh, earlier. So if you've been following the Often Troll Cup here in Tibby Talks, you've seen this deck before so i'll make sure there's a link here as well popping up probably right now a card you can click on that and then you can see that match i think it was or in the swiss rounds or the quarterfinals i'm not sure but it was quite a nice match uh but now looking at this deck of ron it's quite clear we see some synergies here that we've seen before we see diamond valley in rook egg that's the first thing that i notice diamond valley of course a land from the arabian nights if you tap it you can sacrifice a creature and you gain life equal to its toughness so that means that you can sacrifice your rook egg and then you get a 4-4 flyer at the end of turn so that's quite nice that's a pretty good deal we also see um, two such trolls two often trolls in combination with an Neverneurl's disc and i guess the interesting thing here is that ron has decided just to play with one Neverneurl's disc and look at that sideboard he's got three more on the sideboard so he can go full disco troll if he wants to after the first match kind of making it a little bit of a transformational sideboard. I also like that singled out anime debt in this deck and also the two control magics. I think both of these cards go really well with uh, Diamond Valley and of course anime debt also works nicely with Rook Egg. You sack a Rook Egg to the Diamond Valley and then you get your Rook Egg back and you just sack it again and then you have two 4-4 flyers. So that's 
that's pretty sweet. That's quite nice if he can pull that off. This deck obviously is fully powered. I mean, look at that. We've got Ancestral Recall. We've got Time Walk. We've got Time Twister. We've got also the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, we've got a lot of restricted cards in here as well. We've got um, a Mox as well. I see a Mox Jet, Mox Pearl, Black Lotus. So this really has all the goods to kind of reach a finals of an old school tournament. And, and yes, it looks like a solid deck. And of course, he's reached the finals. But I wonder, it, I think it's going to be tough for Ron here just because Robert is packed with so much direct damage. But then again, Ron is playing with all these power cards. So this is going to be, promises to be a really interesting finals. So without further ado, let's go to the first game of the Often Troll Cup 2020 finals between Robert and Ron. Game number one of the finals. And as you can see, the image quality is far from great, especially on uh, on Robert's side. Okay, there's lights going off here. Uh, what I'll try to do is I'll just try to talk you through it, maybe show some cards on the screen as well to kind of clarify it. And hopefully the image quality will improve over time, but we'll just have to see. Um, it looks like a very good start, by the way, for Robert with that black vice. That means early damage for Ron, but Ron's able to kind of empty his hand out now, double mox, and a Felwer Stone. And there's his land for turn, also a Mistress Factory. So both players have some pressure on the board. And now it's interesting already for Robert. Is he going to attack? I guess not, because he can play a Suchi. That's a far better option. So Suchi turn two, that's actually pretty decent. And let's see what Ron can do. And he's, okay, he's putting a Rook Egg on the battlefield, which is actually a perfect answer here. Because if Robert attacks, Ron can block with the Rook Egg, and that's not good news because that means that Robert is giving Ron a 4-4 flyer. So he's very unlikely to do that. Also, he cannot play a Bolt or anything. So, you know, the, the Suchi is kind of now stuck in hand here. Rook Egg is actually quite a nice card against his Atog Brew. Now that I think about it, because it also works great against uh, the Atogs. It's just this, this kind of blocker that's in the way. You don't want to kill it because then you're giving your opponent a 4-4 flyer. So that feels really bad. But then again, you are an aggressive deck and you want to win early game. And you don't want to go into mid game, late game. Because Ron simply has the better cards. Let's see what he's going to do. And... It, oh, he's playing an often troll. That's kind of <laughs> really hard to see. It's an often troll. And you see the gestures from Ron here is always really happy to see often troll. So... Oi, 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 as they say at this tournament when an often troll hits the board. But, it, I mean, it's not really helping it over to here. And there is a Diamond Valley. So that Diamond Valley, of course, works great with the Rook Egg. But Ron doesn't really have a reason to use it right now. Because if he actually uses the Diamond Valley on the Rook Egg, what he's basically doing is he's putting pressure on himself. Because you can then see Robert going to attack with the Suchi. Uh, with the often troll and maybe the best way to to continue here for robert is just to attack you know just get that egg out of the way that okay then he'll have a 4-4 flyer but the next turn you can just attack with your atok and with your suchi and then you can let ron decide if he wants to trade his 4-4 flyer for a suchi i mean it is what it is you don't want to be taken held hostage by one single egg Let's see. Now that I think about it, I guess um, the card from Arabian Nights is actually a very good answer. Uh, the enchantment, black enchantment that removes a creature from the game. That's actually a really good answer for the Rook Egg. I'm trying to come up with the name right now. And we see another Rook Egg, by the way. And uh, Oubliette, of course, that's the name for it. So Oubliette would be a great answer. Of course, Robert is not playing with it because he's not playing with black, but Oubliette would be a great answer to Rook Eggs. Oh, is this a City in a Bottle? And this is quite interesting because what City in a Bottle does, it works on Arabian Nights cards, but not on the tokens. So this is basically, you know, Ron using his Diamond Valley now for the last time. And that means that Ron will get uh, a two bird for for flying bird tokens at the end of robert's turn but he's completely well not completely yeah he's completely open because he can't activate the factory anymore so i would just yeah i would just swing in with everything you have that means tons of damage here 
He can pump it. And is he going to sack? He's going to sack his vice, right, to the ATOC? Or not? He's actually not doing it. Maybe because of the draw seven that Ron is in his deck. And he, of course, has a wheel as well. And Ron is dropping all the way down to 10. And he could have put him much lower. And there's another often troll. And of course, the 244 flying bird tokens that Ron got at the end of Robert's turn. So Robert has managed to have Ron's life without using any direct damage. So that's quite good news for him. But he's also pretty low on cards. And Ron is 244 flyers. But of course, Ron is kind of, it's kind of going to be difficult for Ron to attack with both of those flyers. But that often troll is really going to be useful. The nice 2 2 regenerator. So I'm kind of expecting maybe Ron to start attacking with one of the 4 4 flyers. He's probably just going to wait until he can, like, um, kind of start building up more board presence and then he can just start attacking. I think if you're Robert, what I would do now is kind of like save up my direct damage and just um, yeah play it to the face, definitely. And try to kill him that way. It looks like he's now playing his Chain Lightning or not. Is he taking it back? Yeah, he's playing the Chain Lightning. And okay, he's playing it on the Often Troll. Okay, that's what's happening here. I thought it would do it on the face. So he's now regenerating the Often Troll. This is an interesting move. Does that now mean that he's going to attack with the Atok and the Suchi? Now that the often trolls out of the way. Very interesting. I just assumed it would be on the life total of Ron since he's already on 10. And if you look at like the amount of direct damage that, that Robert has in his deck. And he's just going to swing in full here. And remember, he can feed those two Mishra's factories to the Atox. So he's really making it difficult here for Ron. And because of that chain lightning on the often troll and Ron needing the Batlands to regenerate, he doesn't have any mana to activate that Mishra's factory that he has. So with that single chain lightning, he actually took out two creatures, you know, that, that are now not able to block on the combat. So it's actually quite nice. Now, unfortunately, we don't know what Ron is blocking right now with his birds. I think the difficult thing here for, for, for Ron to decide is, is he also going to block a Suchi? I assume he is blocking an Atok and perhaps a Suchi or a Factory. Showing the amount of cards in hand. He's going to feed the vice to the Atop, making it a 3-4. What else is he going to do? Is he going to feed the city in a bottle as well? Yes, he's going to feed the city in a bottle. Making it big enough to kill one of the birds. And I guess the other blocker is the Suchi. So straying the Suchi for the birds. So actually a pretty good trade here for Robert. Getting rid of those two flyers. And we see Ron now untapping only one often troll. And he's on six. And six is just very low when you're playing against four bolts and four chains. And he can now attack again with everything. That's kind of what I'm expecting him to do here. Using that soul ring to activate both Mishra's factories and swinging in full here. And Atok is such a hard card to play against when you're under pressure like this. At least Ron now has enough mana to regenerate the often troll and to activate the Mishra's factory. I think yeah, Robert is probably looking at some direct damage. Well, if he has, if he has a bolt or a chain, he's basically won this game already because he can attack with four and Ron only has two blockers. So worst case scenario, he still deals four damage and then he can finish it with a bolt or a chain. We see now the often troll and the activation of Mithras Factory. Often troll blocking here. Going on the Atok, of course, that makes sense. And yeah, and we see he can, of course, feed the factory that's being blocked to his Atok, making it a 3 4. So forcing Ron here to regenerate the often troll. And then he still deals four damage, so he's going to go down to two life and a bolt. Okay, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Oh, he had a counter spell there, but not double blue to stop it. Okay, wow. But um, yeah, this is, this is the problem when you're playing against these aggro decks. There's so much direct damage. And if you've taken 
you already know that if, if early in the game you've taken a big hit from combat damage and then you start calculating in your head and you're realizing that, hey, this guy's playing with four chains and four bolts, you kind of already know it's really difficult. And then I'm not even talking about, you know, the fireballs and disintegrates, you know, that we have in this game as well. So it's really difficult to play against these decks, even when you have your deck full of power. So I'm really uh, interesting. Uh, it's really going to be interesting to see what's going to happen after sideboarding. I'm kind of expecting Ron to board in his um, his three Nevenerals discs because, you know, Robert is playing with a lot of creatures as well. And those Nevenerals discs really help kind of containing the creature threat. Of course, the downside of it is that the disc is quite slow. I'm not expecting any Surrendips. Maybe he's going to play them, but I'm not expecting it. Why? Because Surrendips also hurt yourself. So if you're already playing against a direct damage red deck, like Robert's deck is, you don't want to put cards in there that can hurt you even more. But that's just my analysis. So we'll just have to see what these players are going to do. Let's give them some time to sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. And we've got uh, Robert's not on the not on the play i wouldn't say on the play of course he's uh, he's on the draw here after winning that first game it looks like he's taking a mulligan london mulligan rules here at the Ufton troll cup that means if you take a mulligan you get to draw a fresh seven and then if it's your first mulligan you need to put one card on the bottom if you want to keep or if it's your second one you got to put two cards on the bottom and it looks like it's his second mulligan so that means he's starting with just five cards in hand there is a soul ring and a mox jet Look at that, Ron playing out a lot of stuff, but there's not really a powerful follow-up. You would expect maybe a Setch Troll or something, but it's not coming here from Ron. Just a lot of mana, a lot of jewelry, and there's a City in a Bottle turn one taking care of that City of Brass, and he's actually willing to tap his Mana Vault for it. That's how much he values that single City of Brass, and I guess also canceling out, of course, all the other City of Brasses that he may have in his hand. And now Ron doesn't have access to red mana anymore. And look at that no land drop from Ron. So he was really relying on the City of Brass. So this turns out to be a great move by Robert. And there's the Ank of Mishran artifact for two. And whenever somebody plays a land out, uh, you, you get two damage. And of course, that mana vault remains tapped. And it's kind of hurting Robert at the moment. But he's still on a pretty safe 18 Passing turn here, and there we see four mana tapped, and Nevenerals disc, and I kind of talked about it, and here we see it in action. Ron decided, I guess, or it could be that single one disc in his deck, but I do think he boarded in more Nevenerals discs from his sideboard. And we see Robert here going to 17. Now, this is kind of difficult, because if Ron blows up the disc next turn, I mean, of course he destroys City in the Bottle, Ank of Mishra, you know, um, Chaos Orb, if Robert is not going to flip on a disc. Uh, and, and the Mana Vault, which is tapped, you don't really want to destroy that, but you're also destroying your complete mana base. So I'm actually thinking, I don't think that Ron is going to use the disc. Interesting here to see is that Robert is flipping on it. He doesn't want to be held hostage by the Nevenerals disc, deciding to flip before it untaps. And I guess that's a good decision, also depending on what's in Robert's hand. And there we see a regrowth on the Nevenerals disc. And passing turn here. Taking another damage from the Mana Vault here for Robert. Looking at his hand. And playing a Chain Lightning. The first damage here done to Ron. And showing his hand size. Three cards in hand, passing turn. And both players not really playing out any lands. So this is an interesting game so far. And now we see the Nevernurl's Disc back on the board. And I really wonder, I mean, Ron is not going to activate it right now. I don't think so. He would kind of destroy his entire mana base if he would. Let's see what he can do. Can he at least find a red source, a red mana source? I think that's really something that he needs. And there's a volcanic island into a time walk. And there's a red elemental blast on that piece of power. And it also means two damage for Ron here. And he's going to 15. And drawing a card. And it's very important, especially when you play with these direct damage decks, that you really make sure that all the damage is accounted for. 
and we see it over here being on 12 and Ron being on 15. So it's quite interesting, right? Like Ron has dealt zero damage, I believe, to Robert and still he's, he, and he's already on 12, so lower actually than Ron. Ron's now going to 13, playing that strip mine. Interesting choice to play the strip mine. Could there be a reason why you would want six mana in total? Let's see what Robert is going to do here. Stuck on 11 now. That mana fold is really hurting him. I would try to find, exactly, I would try to find an ATOC. Blue Elemental, Blue Elemental Blast here. So we see a lot of red Elemental Blast, Blue Elemental Blasting. After, of course, the sideboarding. And then, you know, Ron is is in advantage here in, in that department because he's playing against the Mono Red deck. So the Blue Elemental Blast can do a lot. And I think, I mean, I'm not sure, but maybe... Oh, no, of course, it got countered. It never resolved. So he can sack the uh, Mana Vault to the ATOC. I wanted to say maybe that would have been... A play but he couldn't do that and there's an anime dead is he going to play it on the a talk actually <laughs> okay that is actually pretty sweet that is an interesting move he can then start attacking next turn and he's got some artifacts as well that is quite interesting and look at that robert already going down to 10 so his life cut in half mainly by his own resources there is a Blood Moon. Okay. So that is definitely going to hurt uh, Ron here. Playing a Lightning Bolt at least. Putting uh, Robert on 7. But that Blood Moon, that is really bad news here for, uh, for Ron. Because it means that he doesn't have any blue mana anymore. At least he's got red, which is pretty good. And drawing into some, choosing not to use the strip mine, by the way, because he could have decided, could have chosen to use the strip mine. Attacking here with the ATOC, sacking three artifacts to it, and is that enough to kill him? <laughs> oh, that's enough? Of course, because he's on seven. Wow. I kind of missed that part. I was just so focused on that whole, you know, Blood Moon and how Ron was responding to the Blood Moon thinking, isn't it better to use your strip mine maybe on one of the lands to make sure that Robert's mana vault stays stepped. But I didn't <laughs> I didn't realize that Robert was already down on seven. And of course, uh, Ron having three artifacts to sack to the ATOC, that means he's winning the second game. It is a 1-1, one -one, and that means we are going to game number three. Game number three, the finals of the Upton Troll Cup. We're just one game away from knowing who is going to win this tournament and that I'm just still thinking about that second game that was just so brutal for Robert he's I mean he's killing himself with his own Ank of Mishra he's killing himself with his own Mana Vault and then to top things off Ron is actually using his own ATOC you know to kill him so that was just, that was just really a brutal game um it is 1-1 here we see a Black Vice opening by Robert so that's quite nice for him that means kind of a free Lightning Bolt Ron going down to 17, emptying his hand quite quickly with that Mox Pearl and Sol Ring passing turn here. And let's see what Robert can do. If he can find a land, is he going to attack for two here with the Factory? Or is he going to play an Atok? Oh, he's going to play Chaos Orb. Interesting. And he's going to 16 because of the Vice. Maybe I would have chosen to attack with the factory also because Ron only had his um, underground sea open and no red source to play a bolt for example and then just play the um, the chaos orb later uh, but okay it's it's a different choice he now has the chaos orb on the board we see a black lotus from the side of Ron so he's got a lot of mana again but that's about it it seems I wonder what he has in hand still four cards quite a lot there we see the ATOC from Robert, and he's missing his land drop here. And there's a quick lightning bolt on the ATOC. He's going to feed the vice to it. And this is interesting, because I'm sure when Ron played the bolt, he realized, okay, Robert is going to feed the vice to the ATOC. So does that mean that, for example, Ron has a draw seven in hand? Remember, he plays and with the Time Twister and with the Wheel of Fortune. So that's going to be interesting. Playing a Diamond Valley here, we saw some glitches on the line. Playing the Diamond Valley 
And another lightning bolt on the Atok. Is he going to feed? Oh, he's actually feeding his Chaos Orb. It's interesting to see here how those bolts are kind of turned into artifact removal. And tapping five, actually cracking the Lotus here to play the Ding, uh, sorry, to play the Rook Egg, not the Dingus Egg, the Rook Egg. And look at that, a time walk. Wow, what a turn, what a sequence of cards here for Ron. Cracking that Lotus meant he still had uh, one blue floating, I guess, and he's using that here to uh, to play the time walk. And also Nevenerl's disc attacking here for four with the four for Flying Bird. Robert is going down to, uh, to 16 here. And that, that was quite the turn quite the turn for uh, for Ron and now we see an attack here by Robert and uh, you know he's able to deal three damage putting Ron here on 16 but the pressure is real here with the 4-4 flyer doing a lot of work for Ron so Robert actually dropping to 12 here and he needs to find a solution for that 4-4 flyer Playing, at least finding a land again. That's something. Can he do something? And here we really saw that that power of Ron really got him back into uh, into the game. Or gave him the advantage, I guess. Because he wasn't really behind. On 13 now, Chain Lightning. And he cannot. He wants to send the Chain Lightning back. But he doesn't have double red to send it back. Ron going down to 10. So we're seeing some real ag uh, aggression from Robert. And the bird doing a lot of work. I believe he's going down to 8 right now. So that means he's on kind of on a two-turn clock. But also Ron is in a little pickle here. Because you don't want to use the disc. Because then you're destroying your 4-4 flyer. But on the other hand. I mean he is probably going to attack with the factory again. Another factory on the board. That means he can actually hit him now for 4. If he wants to, he can also sack the factory to the Atok and hit him for six. Let's see what he's going to do here. Looks like he's in the tank, so that means he has some options. I mean, Ron can always respond with his Nevenerals disc activation. Before damage is being dealt, so that kind of makes it difficult for Robert here. I think... I think what I would do, but I don't know what cards he has in hand, of course, is just put some pressure on, just attack with the uh, with the factory and the ATOC, pump the factory, and see what he does. You know, if he then uses the disc, it's fine, because he loses um, his own 4-4 flyer and his two artifacts. Yeah, I think that's exactly what he's going to do. And this is interesting, he's using his uh, Mishra's Factory to activate the other Mishra's Factory, does that mean he has something, a reason to want to keep the double red in hand? Does that mean, for example, he has uh, a chain and a bolt? Maybe. Attacking here, so first dealing some damage here, putting him on seven. And now he's playing a chain lightning, putting him on four. And he can send the chain lightning back. So, I believe he should be on, at least on three right now. I think he is missing the chain lightning. He's not counting the chain lightning. And if this is another one, here we see a lightning bolt. So this means Ron should be dead right now. And he's kind of forced to use his diamond valley. Now, what kind of happened here is that we noticed this um, this mistake in play but it took us a while to communicate this with the players and of course it's a rare situation because you would um, assume that Robert would kind of know this um, anyway both players are for now continuing to play uh, we see Ron attacking with his 4-4 bird token and playing a control magic on the ATOC practically winning this game but um, you know, they forgot to count an extra three damage. So we kind of intervened here and we sent a message to both of the players to, to tell them, hey, this is actually 
what went wrong. Here you can see the message. Um, and we actually look back at the original footage because we're recording this live stream, right? This is uh, this movie is made out of an earlier live stream. So we opened up and we started talking with the players. This hasn't happened before, but we felt like we had to intervene here uh, because it has such a big impact on the game. And now we're actually going to go a little bit back in time and we're going to repair the board state to what actually should have happened, would have happened um, the way it was supposed to so that these players can still finish the game. Okay, and we're back. So basically what we did is we all discussed, and with all, I mean Robert, Ron, so the two players, myself and Richard, we were commentating on this match and we were kind of discussing, like we all know each other, we're a community, right? It's a player-driven format. Uh, and we were discussing, okay, what's the best thing to do here? And uh, we just decided to rewind to the point, basically, of that three damage. And that uh, would mean that Ron would be forced to sack his 4-4 bird token to his Diamond Valley, gaining life. And uh, that means he's now on, um, on four. And then he casts the control magic, because it's his turn after that. He casts the control magic on the Atok, using his City of Brass. So he's going down to three life. I think I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, and, and Robert is on five, so both players are just so incredibly close to winning this uh, this troll cup. It's, it's a ver very exciting game actually. like or the whole match, you could say. I mean, it's one one, Ron's on three, Robert's on five. And remember, um, uh, Ron has, of course, that Diamond Valley, so that Atok also represents a lot of life. And that Nevenerals Disc is also interesting. I think if you're Robert, you're kind of hoping to top deck like a Lightning Bolt, for example. Let's see what he's going to do. Because if you top deck a Bolt, you can kind of force Ron to sack the Atok. He can also just swing in with one Mishra's Factory because he can pump it with the other. So he's kind of then forcing Ron to block. First, we see a Mishra's Workshop here. I think this combat could be decisive, I think. And remember, Ron also has the Soul Ring, he has the Pearl. So he can actually sack quite a lot. So attacking here with the 2-2. And that Atok, of course, is tapped, so he cannot block it, actually. He can't block. So he's now coming in for three. That means that Ron is kind of forced to pop the disc. So he's going to pop the disc. That's going to go on the stack. And then before the disc happens, he's going to sack probably everything he has to the Atok. And then he's going to sack the Atok. And remember, it gives life equal to the toughness. So that means he's going to gain a lot of life here. Yeah, exactly. He's going to get... Six life, because the Atok has six toughness. So he's going to go to nine. Oh, and this is nice. Second main phase. Robert playing his Suchi here. That is quite nice. That is some pressure. But Ron is now, of course, on nine. So he has some time. And again, damage from the City of Brass. An energy flux from the sideboard. And it is annoying for Robert, but it's not going to kill the Suchi straight away. It's actually not going to kill him at all. So Energy Flux says all your artifacts now have an upkeep cost of 2. And if you can't pay that upkeep cost, they're destroyed. So he's just uh, paying the 2, attacking now, putting Ron on 4. So he needs one more swing with the Suchi. And he's actually won this game. Oh, ho, ho, a Rook Egg. I'm loving this. He's going to 3. Remember, the Rook Egg also represents 3 life because of the Diamond Valley. Oh, man, if you're Robert, you're like, what's happening here? And Robert's just on 5. Robert needs direct damage here. He needs, is he going to pay? I, I would, I, I don't know. I, I, don't I don't know what's in his hand, but I think I would pay for the energy flux. Remember, you have to do that before drawing, right? Untap, upkeep, you got to pay, and then it's your draw step. And then you go into your main. So he first has to decide, am I going to pay the two for it? And then he gets to see his card. An ideal scenario here for Robert would be if he has a bolt for the Rook Egg, and then Ron is going to feed the Rook Egg to the Valley, going to go up to six. But remember, the Bird Token doesn't appear until the end step, so he can still swing in for four more. Now it's going to be really difficult here. 
What is he going to do? Ron on three, Robert on five. I think either way, Ron is going to use his Diamond Valley on the Rook Egg at the end of turn of Robert if he doesn't attack, but I, I can't imagine that he's not going to attack. Because Robert knows this, so he has to go and put on some pressure. Very, very interesting final here. Very, very interesting. What is he going to do? Looking at his hand again. Really in the tank here. And remember, I always fast forward these matches. So this actually took a lot longer in real time. Is he actually passing the turn? No, I can't imagine. I think either way you want to attack with the Suchi. Or not. Is he actually passing turn here? And it looks like Ron just took his card and passed turn again. Interesting. So both players are kind of cut in this stare down scenario. And now, of course, Robert has to make the decision again. Am I going to keep my Suchi alive or not? Maybe he has a trike in hand. That could kind of explain why he's kind of in the tank here. Because he could also choose to just let the Suchi die and then play the trike for six. Remember, this is Swedish rule, so we don't have mana burn. Yeah, so he's going to let the Suchi die. He's going to draw. Ron's got one card in hand. This is so interesting. Tapping for six, and there is a Triskelion. Yeah, I kind of expected this to happen. So Triskelion on the board. And you may think here, hey, wait a minute. Can't he just kill Ron with uh, three counters? Yes, he can deal three damage. But remember the Diamond Valley. Diamond Valley is such an all-star card in this matchup. Ron can respond by second rook act to the Diamond Valley, gaining three more lives, so he would still be on three. So that's kind of the standstill situation we're in right now. And Ron drawing his card, looking at the cards, playing his City of Brass. What is he going to do? And he's just passing turn here, so... Robert paying two for the uh, Triskelion. And is he going to attack? Drawing for turn. And of course, when if Ron would use the Diamond Valley on the Rook Egg before Robert uses the, uh, the three counters, then actually... Ron's dead as well, because in response to that Diamond Valley activation, Robert can shoot his three plus one plus one counters to Ron, who will then die because he's on three. So it's quite, you know, it's quite interesting here, all the things that are happening. Attacking here with the 4-4. Four -four. Blocking with the Rook Egg. And I think there's not much he can do. The Rook Act is going to die. Then, of course, he's going to feed it to the Diamond Valley. And I think in response, exactly, that's what's happening. In response, he can use the three plus one plus one counters. And that means, there we see Robert. And that means that, Robert, congratulations. You have won the Optum Troll Cup 2020. Yay! Let me, I'll, I'll put some cheering under this. Because it's just me yaying here. It <laughs> sounds kind of lame. Um, anyway, congratulations, Robert. Here we see a nice picture of you with all the trophies that you got after that. Uh, you really uh, deserve this win. It's great to see an underpowered brew uh, winning an old school tournament like this. And uh, yeah, man, you've built you've built a brutal, brutal deck. Um, here we see the deck photo. I would like to thank all of you for watching the Often Troll Cup here on Timmy Talks. And uh, like always, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that by leaving a like, leaving a comment, subscribing if you're not a sub yet, and you can also become a sponsor of Timmy Talks 
So if you like this channel, if you like what I do and you would help, you want to want to help keep it alive, keep the channel alive, you can actually become a Patreon and there's a pop-up showing right now and you can click on there and you can check out Timmy Talks on Patreon. So I would really appreciate it if you could uh, visit my Patreon page and have a look at the options there. Talking about patrons, let's take a look at the end scroll and let's see our fantastic, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fik het als zomba kan zien.